There we are. Cool. I think we got this puppy to work finally. And let's just verify here. Oops, trap my phone. <laughs> All right, Facebook. All right, Art World. Time for another episode of the Core 80 Call. With Don Victor here. Uh, oof, man, we're, we're cranking it. We're cranking it here. Um, let me... Uh, Check something out here real quick. And, uh, yeah. So, we're going to be looking at a painting by Henry Tanner. And, uh, Henry Tanner was basically like our first... Wasn't the first, probably, but the first known uh, African-American... American painter and um, he was taken under the wing by some very pr profound artists uh, of the day uh, he got to go to um, uh, France and study and so he, he was a, a serious serious composer a serious artist and um, you know it's just kind of cool that you know uh, we get to honor him as a as an African American uh, painter, and uh, and that, that he got those skills, you know, being Puerto Rican, it's interesting um, that in that culture, similar stories have happened where uh, mainly the art knowledge was of that refined knowledge, that refined level, was really held by the Europeans, and. Uh, and during the migration of the Europeans to the Americas, or whatever you want to call them back then, um, th there were there were artists who who came. Uh, some some because they were exiled out of Spain and France or whatever you know. I know it's Spain, at least. And then they would teach, you know, some of the locals, if you will. And those locals would grow up and become very, very prominent and profound uh, national artists. And so um, uh, Henry here is kind of in that same that same that same line, if you will. And so, uh, but we're going to take a look at his painting called the uh, Banjo Lesson. And I'm dedicating this one to Bill Jordan a.k.a. Don Guillermo, because Bill uh, broke it down and, and he sent it to me uh, yesterday. I was going to do this video and he sent it to me and I was very impressed. I, you know, he, he, was, he nailed it, you know, and um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do it, a video of it dedicated to uh, Don Guillermo and yeah, that's it. So what I want to look at real quick is the image itself. And then I got to tell you this story that happened yesterday that just honestly just really peed me off. I mean, I was just like, Argh. you see here you have this grandfather it might even be a father, but it looks more like a grandfather. teaching the grandson or the son, let's just say the grandson, how to play the banjo. And I love this story because when you're looking at it, I mean, it's, it's just very warming. It's about passing on a culture, passing on knowledge, cultivating the soul and the mind of, of the next generation. And yesterday, I had an old boss who uh, we befriended each other, and, and, to, and so yesterday we went out to dinner. And as I was coming back to my car, and I got in my car, and you know, what most people do, they go straight to their phone and 
catch up on all the Facebook good stuff, right? <laughs> or texting people. Um, and so as I'm, I'm there, this car rolls in, no big deal. And, and all of a sudden, I just hear this woman going on a rant. You worthless piece of crap. And she literally, like, you're just worthless, worthless. You All you do is cause problems and blah, 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 blah. And she goes out on this tirade. And, and she's just, like, pouring this nonsense, this evil onto someone. And I'm like, I look over and, and she, you know, why do you always ruin my day? You're no good for nothing. You can't do nothing right. You're just this big, you're just blah, 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 blah. I mean, she just went on. I, I, I can't even think of the words because it's just that evil. And then to find out she was screaming like that at a little girl that was probably maybe eight years old. Oh my God! I, I I I was raised in a culture a man never touches a woman, but there are sometimes, man, I wanted to grab that woman by the ponytail and karate chop her in the throat or something, man. I, I, oh my God! It, it, it angered me. It angered me. And so that's when I see this painting. This is beautiful. That nonsense is disgusting. So, I, I tell that story to, to share with you the contrast that as adults, when we're dealing with children, we need to be intentional when we're composing their mind and their soul and, and composing the environment in which they're going to be nurtured in. And the discipline that it takes to to provide that to to the children is immense. See, oftentimes when we think about disciplining a child, we think, oh, well, we're going to discipline the child, but it really isn't disciplining the child. It's disciplining the adult themselves to either follow through with what they the consequences that of of the actions that they said they would happen. You know, for example, you know, if you do that, you're going to go to the naughty seat or whatever it might be then you need to follow through. And that requires a level of discipline. You're not disciplining the child. You're disciplining yourself to follow through, to be consistent, to, to know your core values, to transfer those values. And if you're not intentional and disciplined about it, well, then you're haphazard and, and, and organic and free-flowing, and, and, and there's a niceness in that, but it doesn't cultivate. Imagine if farmers went out and they just kind of haphazardly, you know, did their crops. <laughs> well, they all die because, you know, without the discipline and the intentionality, you aren't going to get the results that you want, and that is part of the composer's mindset. And so in this painting, I just absolutely love it because of it's about passing on this culture, passing on this knowledge. And so we're going to take a look at some of the design elements that help tell this story. And so here we are. So let's go ahead and look at uh, four major thrusts real quick. I love doing thrust maps. They're very, very easy to do. And when you get it, it'll change the way that you, that you start your artwork and it will change the way that you see artwork. And so what we want to do is find a dominant vertical that supports the story. And in this case, the, the grandfather is the dominant vertical. From his head to the bottom of his feet is the longest vertical in there. And, uh, and it's dominant and it supports the story. What's beautiful is as if you're following this down from his head to his feet, you'll actually realize that the little boy's hand is actually on the banjo right in the dominant vertical. So that's another uh, thing of, uh, of importance, which is interesting because the head, which is the place of knowledge, the hand, which is the, is the doing, right? So the information is going from the hand, I mean, from the head of the old man to the hand of the young boy. And then it comes right down along the edge of his foot, his leg and his foot. And one could say that he's keeping beat. He's tapping his foot. 
Um, I'm not saying that that is what uh, Henry did in this painting, but if you were composing it, you could take time to actually uh, compose in there the feeling of a, of a tapped foot so that visually you can actually hear the t -t 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 rhythm of it, right? We look at our dominant vertical, I mean, our uh, dominant diagonal, and that obviously is up through the banjo, which is also really beautiful because it goes through all, all four hands. It goes through the hand, uh, the grandfather's holding the banjo at the bottom, the little boy's hand, which is strumming the banjo, and then both of their hands actually up on the, um, on the neck of the, uh, of the banjo. And then the dominant horizontal is nice because it, it comes into the bottom of that table, comes across the, his lap, and it really it, it's perfect because you kind of like, with that dominant vertical and that dominant horizontal come, it creates like this little box, this little safe place for the little boy to come in and practice the banjo without fear, without being afraid, without being threatened, without being embarrassed. He's, he's safe. And, um, and I, and I, and, and that's a really, really beautiful, beautiful, uh, uh, design element that, that Henry put in there. And then the dominant contrast in this image, I'm going to say is up where the little boy's head is and where the hand of the man is and the, and the neck of the guitar, uh, I mean, the, of the banjo at the top. That's the highest point of contrast. Actually, if you look very, very closely, let's go back to the original. If you look behind the, the head of the boy, you actually see that it's almost white. The wall is almost white, but if you go towards the left, it starts to get pink, peachy warm. And then if you go towards, I mean, if you go to the right, it gets peachy and, and, and uh, pinky warm. If you go towards the left, it starts to cool off, okay? And but right there where the banjo is, uh, it, it almost starts to go. It's still warm, but it it almost goes white. And you can all, you can see if you just look at that squint your eyes a little bit, you can actually begin to see the uh, the three va uh, um, temperatures there and the three values. So that's I'm going to say the dominant contrast. And in terms of the story. The reason why that's important is because uh, through the hand you see the doing, but it's in the ears that is the, that's the learning. That's where the education is happening. That's where he's actually beginning to master it, where he's beginning to listen to it. Um, and so uh, that's, it's just beautiful the way that this thing is designed out like this. So now... Let's take a look at some curves. One of the things about curves, uh, when you're looking in a composition, and it doesn't only apply to curves, um, when you do your thrust map, you want to look at the elements around the, uh, the, 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 the thrust and see how many other, let's say, verticals or horizontals are there. Because that's one way of building that energy, that, that power. So if, if, and, and it gives clarity to the work as well. So if you have a lot, if you want this feeling of a, an ascension, let's say, uh, this rising, you'll have a vertical, maybe even a slight diagonal, but you'll repeat it so that it, it becomes very clear that that's where your eye is to move. So in this case, if we come around this, the curve of the banjo, up through the little boy's hand, and then we come back over through the little boy's hand on the other side, and up through the, the grandfather's hand and all the way around back to the grandfather, you'll see what happens is that the value of the banjo itself, where he's strumming, is of a light value with a dark object on top of it, which is his hand, okay? So that makes a nice contrast. But your eye curves up through, and you can see the shadow up underneath the little boy's uh, cheek and, and face. Um, so you can see how, like, how your eye moves through from the from him strumming up and through to the hands that are on the the neck of the banjo and then they follow through up and around to create the area where is the lighter value 
and um, and, and less warm than uh, the area to the right of it. So again, here we are. And then what's beautiful is if you go around these curves and you start looking, you'll begin to see how uh, Henry Tanner is actually repeating these curves right along their apexes. Um, it's radiating out and it's kind of having this vibe of the music as he's strumming. It's, it's pushing this wave out, which is really, really nice. So here we are. So when you look for these curves and you start to move your eye away from that curve, and then you start to pick up other curves that are repeated. And it's really neat. I love the, the curves in the, in the vase here. From the from the jug to the t uh, from the jug to the plate, so that's really cool too. Now, what's interesting is because we're talking about moving from one thing, you know, we're, we're transferring the knowledge that's in the older man into the, the the mind and the soul of the younger boy. One of the things that that um, Henry does here is he actually shows. Um, the darkness of the man, right, and the and that the the young boy is actually of a lighter uh, skin complexion, and this has to do with the passing on of this knowledge as well, because everything is about like moving from one thing to another. So in this case, it's about moving from dark to light, right? It, it's passing that on. Now, what's interesting is I don't know who the little boy is. But obviously, in uh, African American culture, and not just African American culture, but African Caribbean culture, African and South American culture, you're going to have, because of the slave uh, relationship that we had in the past, you're going to have where um, uh, white slave owners had sex with their slaves, right? And so sometimes that would uh, result in light-skinned uh, um, African-Americans, okay? And so that's a possibility of what happened here. Um, it may it may not have been. But again, it's just having that passing on of a knowledge. There's a passing on of a generation. There's passing on of the culture and the music. Um, and in this case, the reason why, I don't know the story behind the relationship between these two guys, but he does intentionally make the old man darker, the young boy lighter, the young boy warmer, and the dark man cooler, okay? Because all of this, everything we want this jumps to position. We want to be clearly understand that something is moving from one place to another, we call that the academy changing the charge, where you go from one place to another. Now, he, he repeats this also in, in the uh, background, where he's going from the cool, and he's transferring over into the warm, okay? He's repeating that same motif, that same concept. He doesn't need a warm, a warm uh, value in here, a warm temperature, um, but he lowers it in value, so the cool is darker, the warm is lighter, the warm is warmer, and the cool is cooler. So again, we're moving from one state to another state, from one state to another state. Uh, you don't see any candles in here, so the candle is not what's necessarily important. But it's just, again, giving our mind and our eye another visual clue that we're, we're to move from the, the dying, old, uh, cool tone uh, uh, temperature over into the, the bright young place of hope and and future and light and you know and and so this is what what was representing the boy and then that cool darker uh, somber tone and temperature is representing the old man and, uh, and so I think, uh, you know, Henry did a great job. I think Bill did an amazing job uh, picking this piece and analyzing it. Uh, when he wrote it up at first, I, I read a line or two, and then I looked at the painting. I'm like, oh, man, this is cool, you know. Um, I want to share this and this and this with Bill. And then I finished reading what he said, and 
he, he, everything I, I wanted to share with him, he already put in there. So I was very, very impressed. I was very, very happy. And, um, and that's what we're doing at the academy. We're not just teaching you how to uh, produce work, but we want to teach you how to read it. And the reason why we want to teach you how to read it is because our goal here is not only to teach artists how to compose, but also to elevate the awareness in collectors and buyers and investors and in the public. So this is one reason why I'm doing these videos is so that we have the, the, this resource out there for people. And, uh, you know, so they, they can go to a museum and actually enjoy it for once. Because, let's be honest, museums are boring unless you know what the heck you're doing. And, um, and I, I love museums. I, I take people on trips to museums and, and, and it changes their life. Uh, but if you don't know how to read a painting, you know, we spend more time on this painting than most people spend looking at a whole entire collection that a gallery, I mean, that a museum goes through to curate and put together and people just walk through, you know, um, which is sad. So this is uh, core 80, 20. Today is the 20th day. We're one fifth the way there. Uh, we're going to end on Christmas. Uh, so that'll be 100 videos. I'm super excited. I'm a little, like, little, like, kind of, uh, my energy is a little low today, but it's good energy. Just this, uh, this working out in the morning is like, whoa, it's kind of like, you know, it, it's just chilling me out, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, one of the exercises that I'm doing for the core 80 fit is uh, I'm swimming every day. And I haven't swam in years. And, uh, and so I'm just like floating there doing my thing. And <laughs> and it's just funny. It's very meditative. And um, uh, and I start thinking about things. And, and I got to be careful because the way my mind works, sometimes I can start making myself crack up. And I start laughing at stupid stuff. And, um, uh, and so today I'm like in 12 feet of water or whatever, you know, doing my little backstroke or whatever. And... Uh, I just start laughing at, at, at this stupid memory that popped in my head. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I almost drowned because I started laughing. <laughs> but uh, anyways, the reason I'm telling you that is, you know, we are, I am committed to the core 80. And I want to see 80 to 120 artists in here for 2017. We're going to just invest our, our life, our time into you guys and make you badass composers. That is the thing. We want you to tell profound stories and we want your artwork to be intrinsically sound. Okay, so that when investors and collectors come along and also people look at your work in a generation, two, three, five, 20 generations from now, it still resonates with people. Because the stories are profound and the artwork is sound, okay? And that's what we want to focus. We want to show you how to do that. The reason why I'm doing these videos is to show you how the masters did it and to show you that people are out there who are aware of this. It's just not about the beautiful painting techniques, which if you're a painter, go learn. But there's a lot of teachers out there who can teach you how to paint really, really well. There are almost no teachers out there. Not saying that there aren't, but there's almost no teachers out there that can teach you how to compose. And I would any day put up my ability to teach you how to story tell and compose and pull it together and make it your artwork against anybody. I'm absolutely confident in what I do. And I've seen too many uh, artists grow like dramatically and very quickly uh, from, from, from this information. And so uh, I want to give it to you. Um, actually, you have to pay for it, obviously. But, um, but I want to just take one year and walk you through this process. Uh, the, the, the learning of it isn't, doesn't take that long. But I want to take a year so that you can go through it and at the end of a year have, you know, almost look at it like, you know, you want to get really, really healthy. And your goal is to have a whole new wardrobe, right? That's what I want to give you. I want to, I want to help you take your style to a whole nother level so that in a year, your studio has produced a whole new quote-unquote wardrobe, 
okay? A whole new body of work that's just elevated to a whole nother level. And uh, I'm absolutely confident that I can help you through that process. So if you're interested in that, Facebook message me, contact me, uh, email me, call me, whatever it is you got to do. Send smoke signals so we can communicate and we can talk about it and I can uh, show you uh, the details and, and that kind of stuff, okay? So until uh, tomorrow, this was a good episode. Uh, episode 20, we got 80 more to go. I'll see you tomorrow. Arrivederci. Ciao. Oh, and before I forget, share, 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 share. I'm coming to you daily with this incredible show. It, 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 it costs time, money, energy, and all I'm asking, if you're not going to show up for the Core 80, um, at least share this with your friends because uh, if this information resonates with somebody and, and you could have helped get this information out, uh, I'd be tremendously grateful. So on that note, share. Thank you.